Hey everybody, it's Mr. White here with some very quick notes for you about a little something called the circular flow model. Now the circular flow model is just a way we can understand uh, visually the way a free market or a mixed economy works. Now any economy starts off with the people and in this model we refer to the people as households. Households means all the folks who live together under one roof. Uh, of course, when you live together with other people, you all share resources together uh, and the, the fruits of your labor, I suppose you could say, in other words, your money uh, generally doesn't just benefit you, it benefits everybody else under the roof. So when we're looking at the economy as a whole uh, in macroeconomics or, or even just in general, we talk about households as all the people who live together under one roof. So that's one essential part of the economy. The other part of the economy is what we call firms. Just so you know, guys, firms just means businesses. Okay, so that's a little factory in case you're trying to figure out what that is. I know it looks like two candy canes or something. Uh, so businesses and households or firms and households are the yin and the yang of any economy. Now, to produce anything, businesses need resources. And so that's where we have the first half of our circular flow model, which is called the factor market. The reason why we call it the factor market is because it's where households sell their factors of production, capital, land, labor, and entrepreneurship to business firms. The business firms view those things as their factors of production. In other words, they need workers and machines and natural resources and of course business leadership if they're gonna produce anything in a business. Now, of course, households don't just give away their resources for free. In a market economy, people live by selling things. So since we're selling capital, land, labor, and entrepreneurship, that means that we expect to be paid. And so for businesses, the money they have to pay for their factors of production are called input costs. From the household perspective, we see that as our income. So that could be like your wages from work, uh, if you sold your property or if you sold resources, think like if you had oil on your property and you sold it to an oil company, that money comes into your household and becomes your income. Now, once households have income and once businesses have factors of production, that brings us into the second half of the circular flow model, which is the product market. The product market is where businesses sell their goods and services to households. So once a business has used the factors of production to make things, the households buy those things. So from the household perspective, the money they spend is what they would call household spending, and they get that from their household income. From the business side of things, they would call that revenue. Revenue just means all the money they bring in from selling the things they produce, like for example, their goods or services. Now, this is what a completely free market would look like. Free market, okay? This market is just businesses and households freely deciding how much to charge for goods and services and for natural resources and other factors of production. You'll notice there's no government involvement in there right now. Now, is that realistic? Is there really no government involvement in our lives when it comes to producing things and when it comes to, to buying things? No, of course not. The government is very much involved. It's right in the middle of all of our lives. And of course, I think we all know one of the main ways that the government is involved in the economy is through taxation. The government taxes both businesses and households. Now, one thing we don't always think about, or, or maybe we do, depending on what side of the political spectrum we're on, uh, we don't think about the money that the government gives away for free. You know, taxes is just money that you have to give to the government. Um, but the government gives you things like welfare. And if you're thinking, well, I don't get welfare, well, sure you do. You get all kinds of things from the government. Like, for example, uh, if you're going to go to college next year, which I assume most of you are, uh, even if you don't receive free money from the government in the form of grants, you will probably get federally subsidized loans, which means the government is paying the interest on your loan while you're in college. So that's a form of welfare. Now, it's not just households that receive welfare. Businesses also receive welfare. And from the business perspective, welfare is what we refer to as a subsidy. Okay, so you need to know this word here, subsidy. Subsidy is payments to a business to get them to do something like, for example, produce in an environmentally friendly way. You know, uh, the government might give businesses that might pollute the economy or the environment money for free to clean up their production process because that's better for all of us. So subsidies are what we call welfare for businesses. Now, 
In addition to welfare and subsidies, the government also has government spending programs. Think like all kinds of government programs, you know, public school, for example, military defense, roads and infrastructure. All of that is government spending that happens in the product market. So the government pays for the goods and services they purchase. Like, for example, if they're going to build roads, they have to purchase concrete and they buy that from private companies. That comes from the product market. But if the government's going to build a road, they also need workers. And so they're also purchasing factors of production from the factor market. So the government spending that goes on for things like road projects or, or for military projects, just think, you know, when it comes to the military, the government has to purchase goods and services. They have to purchase things like tanks and, and machine guns and things like that. Uh, but they also have to hire soldiers. So they're participating in both the product market and the factor market at the same time. So this is what a mixed economy looks like. Just so you know, guys, this is mixed. And if you're asking yourself, well, what kind of economy does the U.S. have? Are we a completely free market economy or are we a mixed economy? Just take a look at this, this little diagram right here and really ask yourself, does this look more like reality where the government is heavily involved in our lives? Or does the other thing look more like reality? The one where uh, it's just businesses and households freely exchanging goods and services. Yeah, obviously, our life looks more like this mixed economy because in reality, the U.S. is a mixed economy. Now, keep in mind, we are mixed leaning more towards free enterprise because the majority of our economy uh, is in the hands of the people and, and really is determined by the households and privately run businesses, not government run businesses. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions about the circular flow model, uh, you can just email me or contact me. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching the video, guys. We'll see you next time.